Hello class, this is Dr. Harden again. Welcome to week two. This week we're going to be discussing angelology and demonology. I realize that this is a controversial topic in the church. I also realize that in a brief YouTube discussion or, or monologue like I'm about to give, I cannot deal with all of the issues related to it as well as I would like. I just wanted to give you some thoughts from the perspective of an individual who's, who's counseled for 15 plus years now, I guess, uh, and kind of what I see and sort of what I think about uh, spiritual warfare and some of those kind of things. First of all, I, I think from a biblical perspective, we have to understand that our problems, our psychopathology, stems from, from three, three places. The world, the flesh, the devil. I think Ephesians, Ephesians tells us that. So I do believe that the devil is active. I believe he is trying to sidetrack uh, people. I believe he's trying to, uh, to upset the apple cart for Christians. But I think we have to, to look and understand ourselves um, and the depths of our own problems. Let me give you an example. Schaefer said, Francis Schaefer said, that when the fall occurred, man experienced alienation. He experienced alienation from God. He experienced alienation from his fellow man. And he also experienced alienation from himself. And a majority of the time, the individuals that we see that come to counseling are struggling with the last issue that I mentioned. The human self is astoundingly adept at self-deception. It typically takes the form of uh, defensive type activities and they're self-deluded. You know, Hebrews 3 talks about how we need to, to stick together as Christians so that we won't uh, be carried away by the deceitfulness of sin. Now remember when we're talking about sin here, we're talking about not just a set of behaviors, but a state of being. And so we are naturally inclined as fallen creatures to be self-deceived and to want to rationalize things. Now, this, this has an effect on counseling because counseling primarily seeks to help people become more like Jesus Christ. Well, part of that, really, what it really seeks to do is, is um, restore the image of God in the person. The image has been tarnished. And we are asking God, or God is allowing us, for, for a better way to put it, uh, He's allowing us to be instruments in His hands to polish the image of God in other people that come for help. As such, uh, part of the image of God is we help them relate to God and others better. But there's also another often overlooked aspect of what it means to be an image bearer. In Genesis 1, we see that God created male and female in His image. He created them. But He also gave them things to do. Now this implies that human beings, and part of, as part of the image of God, are responsible people. We make decisions. We make choices. And whenever we rob people or don't help them learn to take personal responsibility for their choices, in a way we're dehumanizing them. And that goes counter to what we're trying to do of, of restoring the image of God to the person. Now, as such, this is where, uh, this is where some of the uh, discernment or spiritual warfare deliverance type ministries, I think, I think uh, go astray. They, they underestimate the pervasiveness of sin in the soul of the human being. They assume that, that the person's not as, as we might call it, bad, as they are, and therefore the problem must be outside of them. So it's either the world or the devil instead of the flesh. Now I'm not talking about everything, I'm making a general statement here, but I'm just talking about a, a, a general emphasis. And so since the problem lies outside of the person, then they don't, they don't need internal change as much as they need deliverance from that which is oppressing them from the outside. Therefore, since 
we all know we live in a world that's all messed up, the prime candidate tends to be Satan. So we struggle with Satan's oppression. Well, we know the Bible tells us that believers, first of all, cannot be demon-possessed anyway. But going back to the oppression, since, since the problem is oppression from something ruling over us, the answer becomes revolution. It becomes freedom. It becomes being released from those ties that bind us. Well, a biblical worldview says that, uh, first of all, we're to cheer up. Jack Miller used to say, cheer up, you're worse than you think you are. But, but a, a deeply fallen human being uh, who struggles with sin, both as a set of behaviors and a state of being, who needs not freedom, but needs repentance and redemption, which comes through repentance, if you will. So, with that being said, what we're trying to do here is foster a realistic view of the self, a self that can walk with God transparently instead of hiding behind fig leaves of self-deception. And often, if we, if we, if everything becomes the devil, then it's, it's like if you're a hammer, everything's a nail. We don't even get to the point of going deeper inside and saying, okay, is there something going on in your own soul that we need to look at and address and bring into the light of, of, of the Word of God? So as such, um, a few of the things that I, I like to do when I'm, when I'm helping people try to diagnose things uh, from a biblical perspective is, is the first principle is when we're diagnosing a problem, because you know it's either the world, the flesh, the devil, uh, from a biblical uh, diagnostic standpoint, uh, I like to start with horses before I go to zebras. And what I mean by that is I like to make sure that I know one thing for certain, the devil may be involved, the world may be involved, but Jeremiah 17, 9 tells me, I know the heart's involved. Um, it says that it's, it's, uh, it's sick above all things. And so we know that in some way, shape, or form, uh, the human heart's involved, the flesh is involved. So I typically start there and work my way out. That way it, makes, it, makes, it helps me make sure that I've covered all the bases. Now, more oftentimes than not, what I find is that the individual is, is being self-deceived. It, it's helping them deal with anxiety, uh, shame, guilt, things like that through some sort of rationalization or failure to take responsibility. So then we can help them with that through uh, applying the gospel to their problem by helping them repent of their sin, uh, strengthening their faith uh, in case of suffering. So, so we just have to remember, we look for horses first before we go to the exotic zebras of the devil did this, the devil did that. A lot of times the devil agrees totally with what we're doing in our fleshly uh, natures. He just didn't have to do a lot of work because we're doing all the heavy lifting. Um, I think of a biblical example of Job. If there's anyone that's been under satanic oppression in the entire Bible, it's Job. And what you see if you read through Job, you don't see binding and releasing. What you see is bowing and repenting. Job's whole world was turned upside down, and he, he moved back toward God. So that brings up the, the kind of the last point I want to make, and how do we fight spiritual warfare? We fight spiritual warfare by living the Christian life. We resist the devil by drawing near to Christ through prayer, Bible meditation, obedience, acts of service, worship, praise. We live the Christian life. We want to be so lost in God that the devil has to approach him in order to find us. I hope that that will provide just a general overall view of, of, of what I'm talking about when it comes to spiritual warfare. The devil's real. He's active. But when people come to us for counseling, we can pay attention to that. But, but the actual the actual techniques and the actual things we're going to give them to help them is going to be the same, whether it's a battle with the flesh, a battle with the world, or a battle with the devil. It's drawing near to Christ. It's, in, it's, it's deepening our communion with Christ. Therefore, we need to focus on the things that they can control, help them become 
the image of God that, that God designed them to be by allowing them to take responsibility, uh, allowing them to face the things they're not facing, and in order to experience the love and connection with Christ. God bless, and I'll talk to you soon.